humans need ecosystems for their well-being and for their survival. And so this whole notion of conservation, of sustainable use, of restoration of ecosystems has become central to addressing adaptation in the context of climate change. Ecosystem-based adaptation involves the use of healthy ecosystems and their natural ability to adapt to climate change as part of adaptation strategies. In other words, it includes the use of nature in doing adaptation at all levels. Why do we not invest an equal amount, if not more, into a shovel-ready technology, so to speak, which is nature's way of sequestering and storing carbon? It is actually by investing in our ecological infrastructure, in ecosystems, in expanding the ability of nature to sequester and store carbon, that we have the greatest opportunity to do something. And the wonderful thing is, it's not only carbon sequestration, we're also faced with loss of ecosystems that will affect our food security, our water security. We're losing species on an unprecedented rate. So maintaining, restoring, protecting, expanding natural ecosystems has multiple benefits, immediate in terms of climate change, but also fundamental to the future of many of the services that we simply take for granted from nature. We are lacking an evidence base um, a series of um, lessons learned, successes and failures that we can use to replicate, to scale up. And um, this brings into focus this particular South-South collaboration project, which um, actually documents very well how ecosystem-based adaptation is taking place in three different countries with three different ecosystems and stimulates research to build on that and to make it sustainable and replicable in other contexts. Identifying species that would be able to resist with time because of climate change, that requires uh, putting the minds of scientists and researchers together in order to find out what can resist better in a changing climate. The Chinese Ecological Research Network, CERN, of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is studying resilient species in various biomes. The Turpan Eremophytes Botanic Garden in Xinjiang province is the lowest botanic garden on earth. Here, scientists studying salt-tolerant desert plants have significant findings that may be helpful elsewhere. The South-South cooperative nature of this project is huge, and China, through its uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is undertaking a lot of research in different types of ecosystems, um, the value that this project has in being able to share that and translate that knowledge and make it locally applicable in Nepal, Seychelles, and Mauritania is invaluable. Uh, Mauritania has a specific uh, profile uh, in the context of adaptation because we are facing uh, droughts, we, we are facing uh, some problems uh, in relation to land degradation in the problem. and these problems have uh, uh, some, some difficult and some chronic, chronic uh, uh, effects uh, on society uh, and this project uh, is expected to, to bring a new, uh, a new concept. The Taklamakan Desert's name means you go in but you don't come out. Yet even here, in the most forbidding environmental conditions imaginable, the Chinese have created a great green wall, stretching for 436 kilometers, right through the middle of the world's second largest sand desert. 没有任何没有任何的植物然后我们的团队在这里已经有了近十年的工作经历然后建立了塔中植物园然后种植了许多植物现在呢经过十几年的时间就是说这里已经变成了一片小绿洲 China's experience building green shelter belts in some of the most difficult conditions possible 
provides important and immediately useful knowledge that make thinkable some of the most ambitious and difficult ecological restoration undertakings in Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and beyond. China uh, is being uh, spectacular progress, not only in, uh, in technology, not only in, uh, in, in progress, uh, modern uh, uh, issues, but only in, in, in the issues about sustainable development, in the issues about uh, new approach to tackle the issues that are really uh, uh, considered as threats and concerns for the world. Mountainous zones are vulnerable to earthquakes and to floods and mudslides, especially if the vegetation cover is lost. Here again, China's experience following the devastating Sichuan earthquake in 2008 can help other countries design their response to similar disasters. China, it is also a mountainous country, and uh, we also have a mountain. Being us, uh, similar geographical features, and we are neighbor, we, are very, we feel very easy to learn from the China. In small island developing states, coral reefs and mangrove forests are the natural defense against rising sea levels and storm surges, including tsunamis. The main component is restoration of the mangrove ecosystems. You know Seychelles is a small island developing state uh, with uh, nearly 115 islands, uh, mostly coral and islands. Uh, the main islands also having uh, low-lying areas. So the mangrove restoration would be very important in, in, in creating resilience towards the climate change impacts. Ecosystem-based adaptation offers a way to engage millions of people in both adaptation to increasingly inevitable outcomes and in helping sequester significant amounts of carbon in biomass and soils to help mitigate against the worst potential outcomes of climate change. China has been a leader in ecosystem-based adaptation and has spearheaded this flagship activity which aims at transferring its experience in restoring and sustainably using its ecosystems to other countries. Um, I think it has not been in the spotlight always, but now we are coming to understand the huge successes that are happening in this country and um, are starting to learn from them. And I think that this project is a very important gateway to enable the transfer of this knowledge.